In this episode, Ubuntu on Motorola's Zoom and getting started with Linux, the complete guide. You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise, a proud member of techpodcasts.com. Today's podcast is brought to you by audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash quicksurf. Over 85,000 child titles to choose from for your iPod or MP3 player. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona here in Studio C1. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there. I'd like to encourage everybody to head on over and check out my new daily tech news show. It's called Today's Tech News, and you can find it online at tech.quicksurf.com. And if you'd be so kind, uh, right-click on the subscribe link underneath the download link and copy that URL and paste it into your podcatcher of choice. And uh, that will ensure that you get uh, the daily technology news uh, as it's posted. And uh, that'll help me out uh, quite a bit. Let's go ahead and get into the news for Season 12, Episode 5. From Lily Puting, how to run Ubuntu Linux on the Motorola Zoom tablet. Sure, the Motorola Zoom is the first tablet to ship with Android 3.0 Honeycomb, Google's first attempt at a truly tablet-friendly operating system. But if Honeycomb isn't enough OS for you, how about Ubuntu Linux? Thomas Somers figured out how to get Ubuntu up and running on the Zoom, and he's posted instructions and a demo video on his website. The process doesn't actually replace Android on the tablet, but instead installs Ubuntu alongside of it. And in order to access it, you actually have a a VLC client that that attaches to it. So it allows you to uh, run Ubuntu inside a program window on your Android tablet, and you can flip between native Android apps and Ubuntu apps. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Definitely check it out. From internet.com in their datamation section, uh, there's an article here, 15 must-have Linux desktop apps. I'm not going to go into uh, all of the uh, applications uh, listed here, but I will read the uh, the first paragraph that uh, the author, Matt Hartley, uh, started off the article with. He says, uh, recently it was brought to my attention that all the desktop Linux hoopla in the world doesn't mean squat without compelling applications to get the end user interested. He's, he's absolutely correct, by the way. To address this need, I've rounded up 15 powerful Linux applications that reflect the best that Linux has to offer on uh, the desktop user, both in and out of the enterprise environment. So I th- he's, he's pretty much hit the nail right on the head. Um, you know, and a lot of people don't get this. It's all about the apps. You know, I, this is a Linux show and I hate bringing Apple into it, but the reason why the iPhone and the, and their iPad and iPod touch are so popular is one reason, one reason. Well, there's a couple of reasons, but the primary reason is their app store. It's seamless. It just works. The apps are curated. So you don't get utter and complete garbage that doesn't work. It just works. Now, with that being said, That's locally. The cell phone network is a whole other issue altogether. But the apps are what puts Apple's mobile products heads and shoulders above all of their competitors. There is no comparison. You know, Microsoft is not even in the picture and worth discussing. You know, the closest competitor is the Motorola Zoom, for crying out loud, or the Samsung Galaxy S or the Galaxy Tab or, you know, something along those lines. And, and even then, they're nowhere near uh, what, uh, you know, Apple's got going on in terms of just the whole ecosystem. And, and that's what really drives it for a lot of people that aren't technical and they don't care what's running behind the scenes. So he's got it. Go check the list out. From IT World Canada, Novell steps up to managing enterprise Linux servers. Novell last week shipped software for managing enterprise Linux servers made by Novell and Red Hat, taking its systems management approach to a higher level. Novell had previously offered management software, but Zenworks is a Windows-based, more generalized, and more focused on desktops rather than servers, acknowledges Doug Jarvis, Novell's product 
man marketing manager for Linux Enterprise. So the new software, SUSE Manager, is very much focused on Linux, which is a good thing. So check that out. Uh, good stuff happening over there. From the register, Novell Paints Red Hat Linux Manager Green. This is along the same storyline. The quickest way to build a commercial Linux business is to clone whatever Red Hat does. Uh, that's what Oracle and CentOS do with their enterprise Linux redistributions and accompanying paid for support offerings. And it is now what Novell is doing with a new product called SUSE Manager. So we've already talked about that, but uh, still pretty interesting stuff. From PC World and their Linux line uh, blog, I guess you could call it, uh, Embedded Linux gets, gets a boost in newly unified project. Whatever your opinion of Linux's desktop potential, few would dispute the value of the open source operating system in embedded devices such as mobile phones and personal media players. After all, it's fast, it's free, it's open source, it's customizable, and it's extremely stable among many other advantages. Whereas building custom designs with embedded Linux has typically required significant development work, however, a new initiative promises to make it much easier. Specifically, the Linux Foundation's Yocto project has teamed up with the like-minded open embedded community on a unified effort to advance embedded Linux across a variety of chip architectures, the foundation announced on Wednesday. Best thing that could possibly ever happen to embedded Linux. I wish that would happen to a more degree with Linux in general. From channel register, Red Hat, yes, we undercut Oracle with hidden Linux patches. Wow, underhandedness going on in open source land? <gasps> Unheard of. Red Hat has changed the way it distributes enterprise Linux kernel code in an effort to prevent Oracle and Novell from stealing its customers, making it more difficult for these competitors to understand which patches have been applied where. Some have speculated that the change, that the change is designed to make it harder for Oracle as well as the open source sent OS project to build their own Linux distributions. But Stevens says this is not the case. He says the change is meant to hamper Oracle and Novell's ability to offer support to customers who are, who are already running Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Good old competition. And that's how they respond. I don't know if you could term it competition. That's a whole other discussion. Shoot me an email, linux at quickstuff.com if you want to have such a discussion. But uh, still, interesting stuff. From Lifehacker, this is, in my opinion, the meat and bones of this episode, Getting Started with Linux, the Complete Guide. Now, there are a lot of Linux you know, old-timers out there, but there are also a lot of Linux newbies or not even Linux users uh, the statistics of downloads on my website bear that out. And the vast majority of people who download my shows use iTunes and iTunes is on Windows and OS 10 only. And the vast majority of iTunes is for Windows. So there's a lot of Windows users that listen to my show. And so I thought it would be a good idea to uh, give them a nice, beautiful article called Getting Started with Linux a life hacker night school course. And so check this out. Uh, really awesome stuff. A really great resource. I highly recommend it. And with that, that is the end of this episode. So I thank you for watching and I will see all of you on the next episode. Follow us online, linux.quicksurf.com. Um, I've got a variety of uh, subscription options there. And with that, I will see all of you then. Bye.